Welcome back. It's been over a month since the conflict between Israel and Hamas began. The U.S. has now warned Israel again about the post-war occupation of Gaza, the possibility of it. Even top diplomats from the G7 have called for, quote, humanitarian pauses in Israel's bombardment in order to be able to deliver aid to Palestinian civilians in the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has rejected calls for a permanent ceasefire and clearly stated that Israel will not stop till the very end. And their end has been very publicly stated, the complete annihilation and elimination of Hamas from Gaza. In fact, Israel's military has surrounded Gaza City, is what they're saying, is targeting terrorists inside their underground tunnels as well. The IDF has claimed to be operating in the heart of Gaza City and have released images of weapons that have been recovered there. But let me reiterate what the US has been telling Israel over the last 20 days or so and what they have reiterated. So the White House reiterated on Tuesday that it does not believe that Israeli forces should reoccupy Gaza. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said that this will not be good for Israel or for the Israeli people. This follows Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's comments that the country will have overall security responsibility in Gaza for an indefinite period after the war ends. A statement that gives the first insight possibly into Israel's vision of a post-war Gaza. US earlier too, before the ground invasion began, had warned Israel against a reoccupation. You would remember that Joe Biden, American president in fact, had even advised Israel publicly to not commit the same mistakes America did post 9-11. But this is how Mark Regev, senior advisor to Israeli Prime Minister, has responded. We're not talking about a, any sort of ongoing occupation of the Gaza Strip. Once again, we want the Gazans to rule themselves and we think there'll be an international effort for that. But if you bring up the Palestinian Authority, I, I want to say what needs to be said. We're a month uh, today since those terrible October 7th massacres. And the Palestinian Authority has still, has still refused to condemn them. And I, I'm sorry, their silence speaks volumes. And for them to say that they're a peace partner and at the same time refusing to, get, to condemn the sort of atrocious uh, uh, violence. Uh, the German Chancellor compared the violence we saw to the Nazis. Yes, they refused to condemn it. That is a problem for Israelis across the political spectrum in my country. Now, lots of pressure and questions have been mounted on Israel since the October 7 attacks, from calls for a proportionate response that we're still kind of figuring out what that means, to being demonized as a brutal assault force. Israel has heard it all. And here's the position it has maintained even now, despite the fact that its friend America is piling on some pressure on it. So on the occupation of Gaza, on that question, it has very clearly said that they're not interested in reoccupying Gaza. Gazans will eventually rule over it and govern themselves. On the temporary ceasefire that is being asked of for a few days, no ceasefire with Hamas till they release hostages is Israel's position. On humanitarian aid also, while some corridors have been opened, Israel has maintained that there will be no corridor through Israel until the hostages are released again. On civilian casualties, this has been, of course, the biggest pressure point for Israel. But they have consistently maintained that they are allowing corridors for the population to move from danger spots to other areas. And it is Hamas, in fact, that is using Gazans as a shield. And because their ultimate aim is to eliminate Hamas, they're not going to let Hamas's tactics succeed. On stopping strikes altogether in Gaza, those who have said that Israel should just stop the bombardment altogether, they have very clearly said that we do not intend to stop and they will eliminate Hamas. Certainly, they will not go back or Gaza will not go back to the pre-October 7 situation. The big question we ask though is this and our guests will be joining us. As far as this offensive is concerned, what will a post-war Gaza really look like? did ask him for a pause in the past, yesterday. I'm still waiting to hear something. We're in the middle of the war in the Lord of Gaza. They came from the south and from the west. They were in the same way between the forces of the Yabasha and the forces of the air and the air. Gaza city is encircled. We are operating inside it. We are increasing pressure on Hamas every hour. 
every day. We have killed thousands of terrorists, above ground and below ground. Not the no ceasefire without the release of our hostages. Let's go across to our guest joining us. Deepak Vora is a former Indian diplomat. Professor Madhav Nalapath, geopolitical analyst, is join, joining us. Also, Jay Engelmeyer, publisher, executive editor, The Judean, is joining us. Uh, Jay, why don't I begin with you? There's a lot of pressure mounting, not just for a humanitarian pause, but also, for example, what the US has reiterated, that under no circumstances should there be a post-war Gaza, which is reoccupied by Israel. But the Israeli Prime Minister's uh, position seems to be that there will be some of that happening for an indefinite period of time. Should Israel rethink this? Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, not, not, not. Definitely for, not for the long term. I think what the Prime Minister was talking about is that in the interim per period of time right now, because we do not know how long this is going to take hmm. to weed out Hamas and weed out the, uh, uh, the terrorists within the Gaza Strip, um, Israel is acting alone right now. There are no other boots on the ground other than Israeli forces. I think this is what the Prime Minister had been referring to. Hmm. Um, there is no appetite within Israel to um, re-establish uh, a connection within Gaza and, and, and there's no desire to establish an uh, Israeli community within Gaza. I think at this point in time, the focus literally is getting the hostages back and weeding out the terror groups and uh, destroying the terror infrastructure. And I think um, when it comes down to it, I think this is what, what, what has to be understood about the Prime Minister's words. Um, but the U.S. Said, seems to be very concerned. Sorry, I'm interrupting you. The U.S. seems to be very concerned, no, no, no. even with that indefinite period that he's talking about. So how do you look at that concern? I look at that as pressure that the U.S. administration of Joe Biden right now has from uh, people on the left within his, his base. Um, while Biden has been a staunch supporter of Israel uh, the entirety of his career, and he's mm -hmm. proven so even during this conflict right now, mm -hmm. there are elements within the Democratic Party that want a ceasefire that wanted to stop and uh, they're, they've been threatening him on a political level with taking away uh, uh, votes from Michigan which would be crucial to his re-election efforts in 2024 and I think that at this point in time they have to say the right things necessarily um, I, I, again I agree that um, Biden is, is echoing the sentiments of pretty much every Israeli as well um, there should not be a long-term presence after this conflict within mm. Gaza for Israel um, that being said, we don't know how long this conflict is going to take, and that's why I believe that uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu used the exact words for indefinite amount of time, because there, it is indefinite how long it will take. Okay, so that is indeed a concern. Professor Madhav, uh, do, don't you think that this is indeed un, uh, unclear ch territory for Israel? Because while it is, um, you know, on this offensive and it is clearly the dominant power, Nobody really knows how long it will take to sanitize the Gaza Strip of Hamas and what that post-Hamas Gaza would look like. Well, uh, I'd like to point out that uh, the ideology of Hamas, uh, the, the political ideology, and, you can, and it is backed by methods of terror hmm. by the military wing. In my view, it is a feasible task to, remote, to completely eliminate the military wing of Hamas. It's going to make um, take a much longer time to, to try and tackle the ideology mm -hmm. which is driving an organization such as Hamas. But it, it can only, well, first of all. Secondly, uh, the reality is the Palestinian Authority is the only player now with, uh, frankly, that can effectively uh, to take over uh, governance in Gaza the way it is of the West Bank. And I'm sorry to say that the Palestinian Authority has been systematically, its self-respect has been removed, it has been systematically ignored. And I just wish that the government, uh, the Netanyahu government, had paid as much attention to Gaza as it, it paid to the, to the West Bank. No, we heard from the advisor to the uh, Israeli Prime Minister earlier. Terror organization called Hamas. No, Professor, we heard from the advisor to the Prime Minister earlier, and he, uh, they seem to be very upset with this so-called Palestinian Authority. Where have they been for the last one month? They've been conspicuous with their absence. They've not condemned anything that has come in from Hamas. They're not really on the ground, or they don't really... Uh, have the support of the public either, from what I hear. Look, so how are they going to take over after Hamas? I'd like to say very clearly 
that I have not heard anybody in the Israeli government condemn the settlers who have settled in the West Bank, established uh, certain uh, you know uh, homesteads there, hmm. which again the United States is among the many countries that are opposed to that. The fact is there are certain political limitations. Unfortunately, the info war is being won by Hamas. Hamas has basically wrapped itself in the flag of the Palestinians hmm. and more uh, concerningly wrapped itself in the flag of a very great faith. And that is the problem. Okay. And that is what keeps the Palestinian Authority from basically speaking out more against what is its mortal enemy. One of the main targets of Hamas, in fact, many of the you know members of the authority have been killed hmm. by Hamas, is the Palestinian Authority. But you have to give it some self-respect. You have to treat it properly. Okay. And I think if that is done, then if you build up with self-respect, it will be a valuable partner. There's no question about it. Okay, so you're saying that there is a viable option in the Palestinian Authority to take over after this ground offensive is done. Uh, uh, Diplomat Voraji, what is your opinion on this? What can a post-war Gaza look like and what are the options in front of the world? Thank you very much, ma'am. Always a pleasure to be with you on your amazing channel. To learn from you, to learn from our colleague from Israel and also from Professor Nalafa, whose knowledge is much greater than mine. Um, to our colleague from Israel, I hope you can see me. Behind me is a flag of Israel and a flag of India. You know where my sympathies are. May I just tell you something, sir, in Hebrew, ma'am. Pizza con le Israel. Israel, eliminate Hamas, save the world. Now, we have entered the end game. The tunnels are being pulverized along with hundreds of terrorists hiding inside them. So your question is what happens to the Gaza, Gaza Strip after Hamas is obliterated? You are too young to remember this. 1979, when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, there was a chap called Babrak Karmal. I knew him. Came riding a Soviet tank. Hmm. He was around for eight, nine years in Afghanistan till other funny things happened. You know, there used to be a character called Genghis Khan. 800 years ago, he had said, easy on horseback to conquer a country. It's dismounting and getting off and governing that country that becomes very, very difficult. Mm. So I believe that Abu Mazen, whom you know as Mahmoud Abbas, I've met him more than once. He mm. is mm. hes almost a nonagenarian. He's almost 90 years, 88 or 89, something like that. So this grand old man will come because there is no option. It has to be the Palestinian National Authority, which was created after the Oslo Accords with the idea of governing both. I think he's going to take over. The Israelis will make sure, I hope they do it for the sake of the whole world, that they get rid of these terrorists and they hand over to Abu Mazen, to mm. Mahmoud Abbas, mm. call him, a, I call him Uncle, uh, Uncle Mazen. Yeah, hand over to him mm. a, a, a land that has been pacified. Ma'am, one fine thing, I'm going to stick my neck out when the Israeli Prime Minister has suspended a minister who talked of the nuclear option. Yes. These things are not said off the cuff. It wasn't a slip of the tongue. I've been in diplomacy 50 years and counting. I know what this means. What I see happening, the Gaza Strip and Israel, and, and I, I beg your pardon, the West Bank are separated by Israel, also like East and West Pakistan, although there is no comparison. Mm -hmm. I believe, this is a very personal opinion based on conversations, that the Gaza Strip will remain with Israel and there will be an exchange of territory and population so that the West Bank or the, the nucleus of the state of Palestine in the future is a unified piece of territory which will be run by the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Whether this happens or not, I don't know. Okay. But my feeling is that this is the only solution. Everybody talks of the two-state solution. Finally, the joker in the pack is Iran. America has sent this uh, subsurface ballistic uh, nuclear, SSBN as we call it, nuclear part, nuclear armed submarine. Hmm. It's a message repeating what Joe Biden had said that, look, if Hezbollah and Iran are thinking of messing around in Israel, my advice is don't, don't, don't. Okay. He said it twice. This is a message. So I believe we are now looking at the end game. Okay, we're looking at the end game. It could be over soon. Certainly, the IDF says, uh, Jay, that they are in the heart of the Gaza city. They've had some successes, of course, over the last one month or so. But my final question to you is this. There are people on the American side that also seem to be concerned that even the friends of Israel are beginning to worry how long Israel will, how long a window Israel will have to carry out its ground offensive before this chorus on humanitarian crisis you know, takes over. Already, they believe uh, the questions are getting larger and larger and difficult to ignore. What is, it, what is your thought on that? Um, well, 
I actually believe that the Western powers that are, are, are pushing for this at this point and that are believing this are reacting to the protests within their own street, um, within yeah. their own cities. Hmm. Um, I think that if you look at what um, the Allies did in Mosul when they wanted to get rid of ISIS, um, there was no time limit. There was no pressure for them to stop. Uh, I think the Mosul operation started in September or October. It ended the following July. Um, and I think that nobody asked them to stop because they understood what was at stake. Israel, for some reason, there's a double standard. And I think that you have a lot of activists on the streets of Western cities right now who are making a lot of noise. Um, according to the polls, they are the majority in terms of their opinion. But mm -hmm. again, they are very large, very violent and uh, very disruptive. And that is making some of the leaders nervous, which is why they're putting pressure on Israel right now. Okay. Um, I, do I believe? Do I believe that this can end soon? Of course, it can end soon. It can end soon when Hamas decides to give back the hostages and uh, give themselves up. I, Sky News actually reported today that Yahya Sinwar's bunker is being surrounded right now by by Israeli troops. Hmm. If that's true, that's a good sign because that means that the end is closer than we think. All right, I leave it at that. I do thank all of our experts for joining us. We'll keep uh, tracking this very very.